Hello, I'm Len Suzio, President of GeoData Vision, and I'm here to share with you an exciting new service. We call it CRA Interactive Mapping. Today, I'm going to cover assessment area maps and loan distribution maps for CRA and analytical purposes. We are going to show you how this new service can help you construct assessment areas that meet the technical requirements of the Community Reinvestment Act and simultaneously minimize CRA performance pressure. This new service also will be used to measure your CRA performance by mapping the geographic distribution of your loans. This new service combines two powerful technologies, computer based mapping called geographic information science and interactive web technology. Combined these two powerful technologies with our CRA expertise allows even small community banks to take advantage of the most sophisticated technology and the most professional CRA compliance device available anywhere. When you define your assessment area you should have two goals in mind. First, you want to be technically compliant with the section of the regulation pertaining to the pros and cons of assessment area delineation. And second, you want to construct an assessment area that will ideally minimize the performance standards imposed on your bank. Too many bankers stop at the technical compliance point and fail to understand that how they construct their assessment area has a decisive impact on performance standards used to measure their bank's CRA performance. This is because CRA performance standards are driven by what the regulation calls performance context. Performance context includes your bank size and resources, community demographics, and local credit markets. Every time you add or omit census tracts from your assessment area, you are affecting performance context and thereby changing performance standards used to measure your bank's performance. The relationship between how you construct your assessment area, performance context, and performance standards leading to your performance rating is best demonstrated by what we call the CRA performance pyramid. Performance context is driven by assessment area delineation. And it is a performance context which the examiners use to create performance standards which in turn are applied to the CRA performance test resulting in your rating. When you construct your assessment area, you should take into consideration a number of very important variables. You must include wherever you maintain deposit taking branches. You should consider the geographic distribution of your historic lending patterns. You need to recognize political subdivisions, in particular counties. You need to identify where tracks are located in their identities and you need to consider tract income demographics. Having gone through this very brief review of the essentials of assessment area delineation, we will now give you a demonstration of how this service will work. The first step in constructing or reconstructing an assessment area is to review the current assessment area. On your screen is a map that depicts the assessment area of a client bank that had been uploaded to us in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. This is what's called a color theme map, and the map details or features are explained in the legend in the left, upper left corner of the map. You can see that the color theme in this map portrays the income classification of census tracts, a very important uh, parameter to consider when constructing your assessment area. Yellow represents low income tracts, gold represents moderate income tracts, green represents middle income tracts, and gray represents upper income tracts. In addition to the track classifications, the track boundaries themselves are portrayed by the thin black line in the, in the map. In, in addition to that, there are other boundaries indicated by the yellow lines which represent the counties in the map. And finally, there's another boundary uh, line that is the heavy black line that represents this bank's assessment area. You will note that there's a separate line down here which reflects the fact that the bank had actually made a mistake and inadvertently included a census tract down here in its assessment area up there. This was not recognized until the map was completed. 
I also just want to call your attention to the fact that the bank's branch is indicated by the star in the center of the assessment area. When reviewing an assessment area, one of the first things to do is to determine if there are any technical violations with the current assessment area. And one of the most common errors we have observed is substantial overlap of an assessment area across an MSA boundary. This is prescribed in the regulation. Consequently, we always take a look at an MSA map to determine if that is a problem with the existing assessment area delineation. You can see in this map that the color theme represents metropolitan statistical areas. The light blue area in the center of the screen is the Columbus, Ohio MSA, and these other colored areas are surrounding MSAs. The non-MSA area is not colored in at all. The blue boundary within the MSA represents the bank's assessment area as defined. And we can see that that assessment area, along with the uh, offending track down below, is entirely contained within the MSA. Therefore, there is no violation of subsection 0.41 in the regulation. Having ascertained if there has been any technical violations of the regulation, our next step is to take a look at the bank's historic lending patterns as distributed throughout the geographies in the assessment area and the surrounding area. This is a map that uses a color theme to depict the distribution of a client's loan history. The color theme in this map uses quartile distribution to paint a picture of loan distribution that shows not only geographic dispersion, but the relative volume of lending too. Quartile analysis involves breaking out the distribution of loans among census tracts and segmenting the distribution into the top 25% of tracts with the most activity, followed by the next quartile that contains the second uh, most concentrated pattern of lending, followed by the third and the fourth. In this map, again, if you look at the legend, it'll explain the color theme. And the color theme shows that the, map, the uh, tracks with the red color or the mauve color are the tracks that have the most lending activity, followed by the yellow tracks with the second most, and the green and the blue tracks with the lower quartiles of activity. The white areas represent no activity whatsoever. A second type of map that we employ is called a double theme map. This map employs a double theme reflected in the colored census tracts in the background, as we explained previously, representing the income classification of the tracts. And superimposed on that are bar graphs that represent the relative volume of lending by the bank in every census tract where it originated loans. Furthermore, as explained in the legend, the bar graph is not only scaled to represent the relative volume, but the color segments of the bars represent the portfolio type. In this way, we are able to get a glimpse and an insight into the all-important issue of distribution among low and moderate income tracts within the assessment area. We are now ready to begin the process of track by track assembling this bank's assessment area. Taking into consideration the bank's current assessment area, where its branches are located, and the geographic distribution of its loans, we will begin clicking on tracks using a tool called the selection tool, by which we will highlight tracks as we construct the assessment area. You can see them beginning around the bank branch and we're adding tracks one at a time clicking on tracks, and as we do this, we're discussing this with the management of the bank, talking about the pros and cons of including or not including each and every track. Typically, this process takes about 45 minutes to an hour for an assessment area. You can see as I'm clicking on, a pattern begins to emerge, and the shape of the new assessment area takes effect. After about 40 or 45 minutes, ultimately we have selected all the census tracts that management agrees should be in the assessment area. And you can see that clearly in this map in the checkerboard pattern that has been composed in the center of the screen. We are now ready to finalize the steps in preparing this bank's official CRA assessment area. We can take the special table that's been created by the computer as we're constructing the tracks and identifying them and we can then merge it into the map. And you can see we now have a nice black boundary going around the assessment area as the bank has decided 
would be appropriate. We will then remove the checkerboard area from the middle. And we now have a finished map ready for your CRA file. You can see that this is rather simple but very sophisticated and very effective because you can visualize and see your assessment area as being constructed and you have the ability to talk to some of the best professionals in the field, experts in CRA compliance. This map has all the elements that are required for a CRA assessment area map. It has the boundary of the assessment area, the tract classifications income-wise, where the branch is located. We did not include the tract identities in this map because of the very tight configuration of tracts and the, their density, which would make it's very difficult to have a legible track number imposed on the map, but a separate table can be appended to the map to meet the regulatory requirements. You have now had a very brief demonstration of this exciting new technology. We encourage you to contact us if you are interested in more information by contacting Bob Suzio at GeodataVision, Bob's at GeodataVision if you choose email, or calling Bob directly at his phone number 203 245-2750.